A great data analyst portfolio should clearly communicate and reflect the skills, knowledge, and experience you have to both technical and non-technical audiences. It should be a one-stop shop that you can use to help build your brand, highlighting everything you know within the world of data. Hey, my name is Mo Chen, and I work as a data and analytics analyst within the financial services industry. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create your very own data analyst portfolio that can get you the interviews, which then in turn can get you hired. First, I'll walk you through how and what projects you should choose, what data sets you should pick, and where you should source your data from. Then, I will give you 10 project ideas that you can use to create your own portfolio, and I'll show you how best to share this with others. If you stick around till the end of the video, I'll give you my top tip on building your portfolio, something I wish I had known when I first started creating my own projects right at the very beginning of my career. So, without further ado, let's get started. Data analyst job roles and responsibilities may vary widely depending on which organization you work for. At some companies, data analysts carry out traditional data analyst tasks, such as querying data, analyzing data, getting insights from data sets to help drive business or product decisions, or creating and maintaining dashboards. Now, at some other companies, data analyst tasks may overlap with some data engineering or data science types of tasks. So say, for example, you could be building ETL pipelines, you could be automating processes, or you could be doing some data modeling if the job role has a data engineering element to it. Or at some other companies, you could be doing statistical analysis or machine learning if the job role has a data science element to it. Now, of course, there may be companies where the data analyst would do the entire end-to-end -end process. So you'd be doing the data engineering, the data analyst, and the data science types of tasks as well. So knowing that the data analyst job roles and responsibilities may vary widely from one organization to the other, I'd recommend you include the following five types of projects in your portfolio to cover all bases. For each project type, I will give you two options to choose from. So project number one would be around data cleaning and transformation. Project two would be on data analysis. Project three would be on data visualization. And project four would be the data engineering or the data science element of your portfolio. And project five would be around communication. So this one is to show that you can clearly articulate what you do at work to both technical and non-technical audiences as well as oftentimes you'll find yourself collaborating and working with business users and subject matter experts who don't understand the underlying technical bits, such as the code you used. All they care about is your findings, your conclusions, and actionable insights. Now, to pick the best data sets, my single best advice would be to pick something original, something that's interesting. We've all seen the Olympics, the Titanic, the Superstore, or the DVD rentals datasets, so try and not pick those. It's in your best interest to find something that's unique, something that makes you stand out. If the data you pick is on a topic that you're passionate about, that's even better. Nowadays, there's so many places online where you can find data, so I will just cover two quickly, Kaggle and awesome public datasets on GitHub. So Kaggle is probably one of the most well-known places to get your data, you can get relatively clean data on various topics such as Netflix, YouTube, sports, or even Airbnb. On awesome public data sets on GitHub, you can find data based on various categories. There are so many interesting data sets that you can find here that you can work with. Now, even better than finding a data set like this, you could just be using publicly available APIs to gather your data. Lots of organizations publish their APIs so that you can make API requests to download the data programmatically. Say, for example, I could go to the Kaggle website and hit the download button at the top right to download my data. Or I could download the data programmatically using the Kaggle API in a Jupyter notebook. Now, even better than getting your data through publicly available APIs, 
you could just create your own custom data set. You could say, for example, get your Google activity data at takeout.google.com, and you could download your Gmail, your calendar, your Google Play Store, or even your YouTube activity data, as long as it's a Google app and it's connected to your Google account. You could then use this as your own custom data set. Or if you don't want to do that, you could just download your bank statements and use that as your own data and analyze your own spending patterns. Now, of course, you could also do web scraping to get your data. But given the ethical dilemmas around this topic nowadays, I on purpose left this as the last one and I won't go into too much detail about it. So now that we've covered the types of projects you should include in your portfolio and how and what data sets you should pick, Let's move on to project number one, which is going to be on data cleaning and transformation. And thanks to NordPass for sponsoring this video. With NordPass Business, you can save logins for all your accounts in one secure place for your entire team. Each password can be automatically created for you with the password generator to get strong, unique credentials in an instant. You can store payment details in an encrypted vault to make purchases in just seconds. No more sticky notes for storing critical information. You can see NordPass Business in action now with a three-month free trial with code DATAWITHMONORD using the link in the description below. Use NordPass as an authenticator to add extra layers of security. Get time-based one-time passwords needed for two-factor authentication directly from NordPass. So if you're interested, see NordPass Business in action now with a three month free trial with code data with Mo Nord using the link in the description below. And like I said before, for each of the project types, I will give you two options to choose from. So option number one in this project would be the FIFA 21 players dataset. And I included some guiding questions that can help you. So say, for example, do the height and weight columns have the appropriate data types? Can you separate the joint column into year, month, and day columns? Can you clean and transform the value, wage, and release clause columns into columns of integers only? How can you remove the new line characters from the hits column? Should you separate the team and contract column into separate team and contract columns? The recommended tool for this would be Python, but you could even use Excel if you wanted to have a project where the tool is Excel in your portfolio. So moving on to option number two, this data set would be the data science job postings on Glassdoor. And again, I included some guiding questions. Can you make the salary column into integers, for example? What information can you extract out of the job descriptions? How can you remove the numbers from the company name column? How can you create some new features? For example, a state column from the location column. The recommended tool again for this would be Python, but you could even do it in Excel if you wanted to. So moving on to project number two, which is gonna be on data analysis. And option one here would be the Stack Overflow Annual Developer Survey Dataset. Again, some guiding questions. At what companies do the developers get paid the most? How much does remote working matter to the employees? How does coding experience affect salaries? What is the most popular method of learning to code? Or are you more likely to get a job as a developer if you have a master's degree or any kind of university education? The recommended tool again for this would be Python, in my opinion. And moving on to option number two, this data set would be your own YouTube watch history. So again, you can download all of your Google activity at takeout.google.com. The link will be in the description below. And I have some guiding questions to help you again. So what were your most watched videos? Are there any recurring topics or keywords in the titles of the videos you've watched during what days or which hours were you watching the most content on YouTube? The recommended tool again for this would be Python. And you can definitely use the beautiful soup and the NLTK libraries to help you. NLTK stands for Natural Language Toolkit. So moving on to project number three, which is going to be on data visualization. Option one would be the London bike sharing data set that you can find on Kaggle. And some guiding questions for you would be, how does weather affect bike usage? 
Is it true that when it's warmer and the weather is better, more people ride bikes? What's the total bike rides between specific periods? What's the two-week moving average of total bike rides? Or the seven-day moving average? Or the 30-day moving average? How can you make your visuals more dynamic and more user-friendly? The recommended tool for this would be any choice of your BI tool, but I would recommend you either use Tableau or Power BI. Now, option number two, the data set would be your own bank statements. And here's some guiding questions. Are there certain days or weeks or months when you spend more? If so, why? What are your most recurring purchases? Are there any unnecessary items you're splashing out on? Are there any outliers in your spending pattern? The recommended tool again for this project would be Power BI or Tableau. So let's move on to project number four, which would be the data engineering or data science element of your portfolio. So option number one would be the data engineering option. So you'd be doing an ETL pipeline and some data modeling. So the data set is the US traffic accidents data set on Kaggle. This data set lends itself perfectly to a data modeling exercise and some guiding questions for you. What should you include in the fact table? What should you include in the dimension tables? How best to build this ETL pipeline? Would your method for the ETL pipeline still work if your data grew by 10 times, 100 times, or 10,000 times? The recommended tool for this would be Python, and you could use Airflow for automating your processes. Now, moving on to option number two, this would be the data science option with machine learning. So the data set would be the credit card approval prediction data set on Kaggle, and some guiding questions for you. So the data is very unbalanced. So how can you overcome this? How do you define if a customer is good or bad? How do you build a machine learning model that predicts if the applicant is good or bad? Again, the recommended tool for this would be Python. And within that, you could use the sklearn library for machine learning. And last but not least, project number five, which is on communication. So you could just write a blog post and post it on Medium. Make sure you keep this simple as you want to communicate to your technical and non-technical audiences as well. And of course, if you're still keen on hosting your own website, you could just upload your posts there. So say you've built your portfolio using these five types of projects. It's time now to share this with others. For anything that's code heavy, I'd recommend you upload all of the files into a GitHub repository with good, clear, concise comments so that when people go onto your project, they know exactly what it's about. For the visualizations and dashboards, whether it's Power BI or Tableau, just push them into the cloud. Say, for example, if you're using Tableau, you could just upload your dashboard onto Tableau Public, which is completely free of charge. And if you want to share your blog post, I'd recommend using Medium. But of course, if you're keen to have your own website, you can also publish your posts there. And like I promised in the beginning of the video, here goes my top tip that applies to your entire portfolio. Please make sure that no matter what projects you're working on, you make them visually appealing. Aesthetically pleasing visuals, code with clear comments and spacing, good-looking readme files can easily separate a truly great data analyst portfolio from just a good one. Say, for example, in this Tableau dashboard of mine, I have some very complex visualization techniques going on using dynamic, user-defined calculated fields and parameters and dashboard actions. But none of this would matter if my end product looked rubbish. So please make sure that you put in the time and the effort to create eye-catching work that's nice to look at. And that's it. That's the end of the video. I hope you liked it, and if you did, you should check out some of my other videos right here. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.